before I move on to X3. Got this to take care of. So this is one of the two um, X games on the Game Boy Color. Uh, for here, it's known as Extreme, but in other parts of the world, it's called Mega Man X Cyber Mission. So, I think this was around the time that X5 was either coming out or was out. So, these are kind of, I would say, a little bit on the side, but... Uh, these pretty much do well on their own part. Uh, Xtreme 1 especially. Xtreme 2 has its moments, but for the most part, it's... I would say it's not the best. But from my personal experience, really, I started out on the 3DS eShop. And I don't think I was aware of the game's existence until it got released on the eShop. So I figured, oh cool, a next game on the Game Boy Color. Little did I know that it was one of those games where it jumps the gun and just, let's say for lack of a better term, it gets released on hardware that would be better off just not on it. So, a game like this is kind of like saying just shove a Super Nintendo game on a Game Boy Color. And another game that comes to mind, Super Mario 64, which kind of, sort of, follows the same fate where it was, um, that port wasn't handled on the DS. And the main method of movement is with the D-pad. People did not like using the touchpad to move. Like, no, it just didn't feel right. And when people play 64 DS on the 3DS, uh, they mostly just used the circle pad for better movement. So it's one of those moments where, yeah, this feels way better. And even though uh, Extreme 1 does follow, uh, I think it follows a similar problem where I think they should have just waited until at the very least Game Boy Advance. And honestly, I think I still kind of think that maybe they should have waited until Game Boy Advance to just, you know, get the game where it needed to be, you know, controls and all. But for Game Boy Color standards, um, I, I say they, there were some accomplishments here and there. I mean, you know, it was a Game Boy Color. No for Pokemon. Mostly... What, gold and silver and crystal? But, regardless... Um, Extreme does some things pretty well. Does something, actually changes the game a little bit as well. In fact, I would say that Extreme, like both of them, are very unusual with this progression, as you'll see. But I think it's the, the good kind of different. I, honestly, I, I kind of think it pays homage to Mega Man 7 in a way. Because Mega Man 7, it just gives you four Robot Masters. Then there's a the Robot Museum, and then it gives you access to the remaining four. And then eight is also the same way, where uh, Mega Man fights four of the eight ro Robot Masters, goes at their duo... And then you get the other remaining four, so... I think that's how I'm gonna treat this. Where I think, where I feel like, okay, just handle the first four, and then just... Handle uh, the other set. Which is 
locked in another playthrough. Which is very weird. Oh boy, how's that for an intro? Wow, that was... That was a... So because this is on Game Boy Advance... Uh, the controls are kind of weird. So you go here... And then... Select is the pause. But it, yeah, go to simple and then... Yeah, start. That's the only change is... Yeah, start is on dash. So this one, I think, still has the double tab dash on the D-pad. Yeah, I'm just going to leave start on no use because having start as dash is... It doesn't feel right. Ah, back up the highway. Alright, let me get my bearings here. Okay, right away the controls feel weird. Alright, I kinda like this. He's actually wondering why he's... Alright. Yeah, he's actually wondering why he's back here. You know, instead of just being like, oh great, I'm back here again. So I think this is the good kind of callback. Also, yeah, I should I should also note a little bit of epilepsy warning here. There will be a lot of flashing lights. Mostly because of anything exposure related or ooh. ooh or when he passes the checkpoint. So, warning, if you have any experience with flashing lights and it hinders your eyesight, I'm sorry to say that, yeah, this game is, I wouldn't, I don't think it's chock full of it, but, nope, oh, just like that, viewer beware. If I'd imagine quite grateful that they have warnings like that nowadays, oh, hey, that was very lucky, ooh. Yep, I don't say that's a checkpoint, I think. Actually, there's some small alterations here. In fact, I don't think the... Yeah, the road attackers aren't here. At least I think they're called road attackers. Crushed you. Oh yeah, first time that you can actually be Vile here. As we'll see another entry. Hey, first time for everything. And also like how the dev bomber is just floating up there. Like, there's... Doesn't come, come down properly. I'm guessing this is the database where they hold all the records of Mavericks. Yeah. Finding data of the past.
Hmm. All right. Yeah, so literally become a... It's like if X was like a virus hunter. At the kind you download on your computer. Yeah, it blocks all the spam and malware. And those annoying pop-ups. Ugh. You know what? That's the antivirus protection I'll pay for. Digiverse. And yeah, no password, so he is free to save. Alright. Alright, before we head into the core, I uh, gotta tackle this. That was quite a mouthful, but yeah, here we are. So... An unusual setup, because as I stated before, there's four of them. But we get three of the eight Mavericks from X1, and then we get one from X2, which is kind of awesome. So it's a cool way to change the game here. So, nope, this, um, this won't be the same rodeo as last time, but I think it really adds to the charm. So, yeah, with all that said, your turn. <laughs> 